Let's talk DLC. Survival! One, two, three, four, five. We do have one last bit of information that I'm sure you guys are more interested in than anything else. The PC release. PC. That beta will be live tomorrow. 1-12. I've been seeing a lot of people kind of confused about survival mode. Survival pits your six-man squad against another six-man squad on a random game type on a random map. And the goal of it is you want to win as many matches as you can in a row. Each consecutive match you win, you get higher and higher rewards that you can put into like new clothing colors and all these fashionable items that you're like growing into right now. Experience levels are going to be completely phased out in matchmaking and instead replaced with letter ranks. Letter ranks work almost identical to how player levels worked in MGO2. So you notice how all these kids look like they're low level scrubs? Well they're not. The max level cap at the time was 22 and your levels were never the same. The new ranking system works just like that by judging how you play against other people instead of just tallying up your experience points. In this system, everyone starts off as an F rank and slowly makes their way up to the higher ranks like S and S+. For example, are you an E class and you outgun and overtake a B class in the scoreboard? Congratulations, you just got a boost. Did you take out an A class and reach the top of the scoreboard and win a match? Another boost for you. Overtake an S class? Another one. The same principle replies to the reverse. If you're an S rank and place on the bottom of the scoreboard against a lobby full of F rank scrubs, congratulations, your ass just got demoted. All right, let's talk about maps. So right now, all we really know is that there's an FOB based map that's being worked on right now. We've got some footage of it, and this is the footage playing right now. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty beautiful. It looks nice. You know, I love Mother Base. Played in FOBs and it works really well. So I'm really excited for this. But wait, why does this look so familiar? It's almost as if... It's just... It, wait, what? It's just a slightly modified base development platform? So, honestly, the map isn't anything new. I mean, it looks good. It's just they didn't do anything. <laughs> so, to be honest with you, we really don't know a whole lot about these maps at all. More than likely, there's going to be a total of four maps, this one being the first one because it's the easiest to make. Now that they've announced that they have the uh, the wormhole Fulton in here, I am pretty excited. You know, I'm hoping we're going to get maybe a map that's indoors, more tightly packed. Pretty much all the maps in this game are outdoors. I mean, these maps will have indoor parts, but besides Calm Control or Cloak and Dagger, where you have to actually go down there because of an objective, people don't really use the indoors a whole lot. Whether it's because you can't fault people indoors, or because nobody just ventures down there. You know, even in Metal Gear Online 2, there was Hazard House that had a big ass mansion and you just fight in that big ass mansion. And I thought it was really dope, it was really cool because you know, you can move around, maneuver, you can still go outside in the courtyard area, but then you also still have the indoor dynamic as well. And it made a really good flow as from whatever I could see. And I really feel like we can use this more. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, cool, knife is fine. I mean, we already have that now. I mean, you can you can do a throat slit when you have somebody hostage and that's just fine. The throat slit animation's hella fucking slow. If you're trying to th slit someone's throat after holding them hostage again, by the time you get out of the animation, you're already shot down. So this knife actually really does make a big difference. The second feature we got announced is padding. The reason why padding is significant is this clip right here. This fucking clip right here. This fucking clip. Right here. You see how this kid stunned both of them repetitively, but because you can just easily run over there and kick them to get back up, it doesn't matter. You're still spamming bullets, you're still raining down hell. As the attacker in Cloak and Dagger, it is harder to do stuns simply because of how easy it is to wake someone up. Now, with the introduction of the pat, you have to actually sit down and do a pat animation for a few seconds, leaving you completely vulnerable and open to any sort of enemy attack until that person is woken up again. This makes it riskier to go and save a teammate and you have to think more methodically about getting stunned because you're even less likely to get woken up now.
Now this part isn't confirmed, but historically they've always given out two more unique characters with each DLC they've released. They've already continued this pattern by simply having two unique characters in this game. So odds are, combined with all the other shit they're breaking back from MGO2, more than likely there's going to be two more unique characters. Now odds are, the two unique characters we're going to get are going to be Quiet and Skullface. You also usually get some quotes with them too, so you might say, Major, we're burning up! And then Quiet has a, the humming noise, humming song, her, her song thing. But I mean, hell, why we got to stop there, right? Why can we get Kazuhira Miller up in here? Hell, I'm not even gonna stop there. Shoot, let's let's put in decapitated African child Hideo Kojima.